Hey everyone, today we're gonna be creating something pretty nice. We're gonna be creating top-down shooter blaster, not blaster, spaceship. Top-down shooter spaceship game element, just like this one. So let's begin. These are the codes that we're gonna run with for this tutorial. First, let's create some basic shapes that we're gonna manipulate later in the video. So create a new layer, create a rectangle, give it some round corners, change its color to this orange from our color palette. And now let's start playing with this shape, adjusting it and creating variations of it. Just hold Alt on the keyboard and drag this shape sideways and it will create a duplicate of this shape. Now let's adjust it a little bit like this, give it this beveled edge. Now let's combine these two shapes with Ctrl E. Select this one shape that you want to be its cutout. Go here and click subtract front shape and adjust its parameters a little bit so that it suits our design better. Great. Now let's give it some interesting textures. Double click this layer to open the layer styles. Begin with the gradient overlay. So enable it. And let's have only one color on it. So the opacity stop of one edge, just make it zero and the color just remove it by clicking and dragging it down. Now on the other edge, select this color and pick our shadow. In the style, instead of reflective, let's have linear so that we control it better. And in scale, you can just make whatever adjustments you see fit to complement your shape. So for example, if we're doing this kind of curved metal piece, then have it on both sides with some adjustments so that it doesn't look too symmetrical. Okay, now let's have another gradient. But this time, let's have it a little bit brighter than our base orange color. So somewhere around here and a little bit yellowish like so. And let's see where we can have it. And maybe also instead of linear, change it to radial, something like this. And we also can have another one just very similar to it to the other edge. And I think right now in terms of the layer styles, I think it's enough. Now let's create some interesting shapes inside of this one. And of course, for this, we need to enable the blend interior effect and disable the blend clip layer as group. Create another rectangle. And now it's really up to you where you want to put these elements. Disable the fill color and then enable the stroke. Now you can clip it to your shape. And as you can see, it's visible and it sits right in there. Now we can adjust some roundness to the corners, of course, adjust its opacity and color because we don't need it to be that harsh, but we do want to have this interesting cutout. Okay. And we also can have the stroke a little bit bigger. So let's do four pixels. I think we can go even more eight. Let's adjust the colors just a tiny bit more so that it's a little bit brighter. Something like this. You know what? Let's have the fill color but let's reduce the fill of this layer to zero. So now when we want to do some kind of additional effects, we can do it easily. So again, if you hit the gradient overlay and you put it right there, you see how it creates this gradient effect on this shape. And this is what we want here. We want to create this interesting differentiation inside of it so that it looks like a mechanical part. And of course we can do some inner shadows to make it pop even more. Yeah, and we can do linear dodge. And of course, size can be bigger, distance can be smaller to create this interesting separation. When we have this shape here, we can duplicate it and really apply it to other parts of this element. Looks interesting. We can have few more elements, copy this shape again, erase all of its layer styles. Now let's do no stroke and the fill color of this brown and get the fill back to 100, align it, adjust it, reduce the radiuses. And really what we are after here is just creating some interesting shapes, interesting enough to look at. Why couldn't I just pick a simpler subject? What else should we add? Mm, ah, let's do the opposite here in this gradient. First of all, let's make it darker like this brown here. And let's remove the inner shadow and let's do even darker. Let's increase the opacity like that. And let's give it this interesting shape on top of it. And of course, let's have rounded corners, something like that. Yeah, we definitely don't need the stroke. The gradient can be brighter and inner shadow, make it less noticeable. And also let's make it normal and make it yellow. Oh, and let's also have the fill to 100%. And you know what, let's give it this orange color, just like that. Cool. 
I think in this darker gradient we can do even stronger colors so create another color stop and make it even darker and redder bring the opacity higher and also give it some scale cool looks really interesting and also let's give drop shadow to this part here so drop shadow dark red spread zero size not that much but a little opacity and distance to bring it even higher opacity can be even smaller now and size a little bit bigger great now let's also have mechanical elements here and there add some more of these elements rotated so that it's a little bit different than what we have the upper part let's create something else something additional let's give it some interesting darker colors as well so just copy some rectangle and bring it here to the top of this shape increase it in size and make it real white so it covers all of this panel now let's give it a very dark color like this and also here let's have it drop some shadow and we're gonna create this separation between the bright orange part and this darker part bring the opacity up size should be minimal distance as well and we can have linear dodge add as the blending mode play with the opacity so that it sits well on this piece okay let's have also a gradient overlay but just a little bit so that we have this color transition now select all the layers that you've created on this piece and click ctrl g on the keyboard to group it into one folder now let's create few more shapes in the same style that we have for this one the process of creating these next elements will be exactly the same like you did right now so i'm just gonna skip forward as i'm progressing through creating these elements i have decided to make them a little bit rounder i wanted to show you real quick how to create this with two simple layer styles so both of them are inner shadow and the first one we have this inner shadow with a darker color with decent size and distance and the second one is another inner shadow but with smaller size and smaller distance and with brighter color and you also can put it in a linear dodge to make it real highlighted so now they look like they have some volume to them Okay. In one of my previous videos, I have created a glossy effect on an icon and I kind of skipped all of the effect stages. So you just saw the final result. This time I want to show you what exactly I did there and we're going to create amber stone kind of effect. All right, so we have our base. Let's jump inside the layer style and start creating a bunch of inner shadows. So first of all, let's do a dark inner shadow, dark red color, size, big opacity, strong and some choke as well. And it already looks like a semi transparent glass let's add some more effects to it gradient overlay with radial style opacity to 100 percent and the color should be in this area of yellow and orange play a little bit with the scale so you still have the red tone to it but also this high burning effect of this yellow maybe we can do this linear dodge here and i think yes it looks kind of nice so i will leave it like that now another inner shadow this time the size should be smaller and the choke can be even harder and now another inner shadow this time the color should be bright or not that bright but brighter than what we had in our previous shadows so something like this now it's time for us to add all the glossy effects to this element you can do it with the pen tool so it's it's completely fine or you can just copy this previous rectangle above this one erase the parts that you don't need this is the part that we're gonna erase okay so merge them together and click on subtract front shape now we have this glossy effect of course we can adjust it a bit so that everything suits our vision make some roundness to these corners of course as well okay and let's change the color to something very bright in this yellow tints click alt on the keyboard and click here on your mask icon it will mask everything now with the round brush with hardness on zero just start revealing some of this mask and if this line bothers you just click ctrl h on the keyboard it, it will hide the selection of the shape so something like this i want to adjust it just a tiny bit like so okay the color i think can be a little bit more yellow yeah definitely like that so we're gonna click with our right mouse and rasterize layer we want to have some blurred edges we're gonna go to this blur tool also select it with hardness to zero and round brush and just give it some smears here and there on the curvature of the element right so leave this little angle here sharp but the edges we really want to blur them now let's create another shine 
on the opposite direction regular rectangle with smaller size something like this and it should really feel as it's burning color is white almost and we're gonna have a drop shadow 100% opacity let's have it red let's also give it linear dodge make the size bigger and even the choke can also be big as well I think red is a, a little overkill so let's make it orange nice I think we can make this one a little bit smaller and maybe give it some tilt to the shape now drop shadow maybe we can make it even bigger so size and spread cool all right now we can have few more dots of highlights here and there to make it pop even more and the same principles can be used to any glossy object it can be stones it can be gems it can be whatever as long as it's shiny it has some glow to it so basically anything can be done with the same steps this is what's really cool about it because it's the same principles and different applications this is how you save time so this is how the final design looks like so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play with these elements just like with lego bricks and we will see what we can create with them i moved all my designed elements into a new canvas and i created smart objects of every folder that i had so now let's create the central piece of the spaceship and remove all the other unnecessary parts so we need this cockpit part right here now let's have this element here <laughs> actually it already looks like some kind of spaceship let's see what we can do and of course let's do only half of this spaceship because later we're just gonna duplicate it to the other side and you know this whole playful approach to designing stuff and having fun as you do it i think it's crucial when you design for games because if you don't enjoy what you're doing your player won't enjoy it as well you need to really get into the action imagine yourself in this spaceship you know just make some cool decisions to what it should be like and yes there are art directors and there are product directors and you know everyone has a say about how this should be but eventually you are the designer and it is your vision that is leading the decisions that you are making so as long as you're having fun nothing else matters really just keep having fun and keep creating cool game elements and assets and ui and i can assure you as long as you enjoy it the players will also enjoy it so just keep doing what you're doing okay let's duplicate everything that we have on our left side to the right side and see how it looks oh man i just love how it turns out i would be definitely playing a game with this kind of design i mean look at this all this little detail across this spaceship and i mean as a player it's always interesting to look at the designs and at the decisions that the designers took when they were creating their elements and yes this design on itself can definitely be used in the game as it is now i mean it's a top-down shooter you're not gonna see all the little details yes but some screens do require the design to be a little bit more detailed and of course i'm speaking about the screens that you are changing elements of the ship or you are enhancing some parameters of it like speed and attack and defense and for these screens we need to have a little bit more detail and the way we're gonna do that is by creating some shadowed separations but not layer style this time okay i will show you exactly what i mean we need to create this interesting separation select this top wing here click control on your keyboard and hover above the thumbnail of this layer click it and it will select it create a new layer and put it under the shape layer that you just selected and fill it with some color and as you can see i filled it with gray color because i'm gonna create a clipping mask out of it to this bottom wing okay transform it a little bit so ctrl t to enable the transform tool and just drag it just a tiny bit to the side right and of course you can with ctrl change its angle a little bit and just some more so that you get this interesting additional shape on those wings in the blending modes change the mode to multiply change the opacity a little bit and now the beauty of it is when we add some blur tool okay so the blur tool should be with zero on hardness and just a round brush will be the most efficient here and as we know farther the shadow is from the object the more blur it becomes so if here we have a real nice and sharp edge to our shadow here we need to have blur to it so just select the blur tool and give it few passes like that 
really putting some emphasis here on the bottom part a really nice addition to those wings so now they are separated in a good way the same we can do now for this wing and of course for these two elements we should have some kind of shadow underneath now listen if you plan to make a living from game design and ui ux design for games you need to pay close attention to what i'm about to say pay attention to every little design element that you put on your piece because this what counts and this what separates your design from the others on the market with this careful attention to detail you're gonna get much more attention to your designs and this is what makes the difference between good design and a bad design and even a mediocre design this high attention to detail okay thanks for watching through the whole video if you like the video and you learned something new for yourself give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel of course and if this is the first video you see here on the channel then you definitely need to go and watch this video as well right now